Lélé, donc compositeur italien. Euh, vous avez travaillé entre autres pour you le cinéma. Vous avez travaillé pour le cinéma, Renato Grinia, Mardo Escaria, Francesco et Paolo Sorrentino, qui vous avez travaillé avec. Et nous allons parler de cette collaboration que vous avez avec lui. Et le peuple, qui était une série majeure. Et je pense que vous faites la deuxième saison maintenant. Aren't you of the the young pope? The young pope. Next year. And you have also written the music for the Grande Bellezza, and you have won an award, an Oscar award for that film. Yes. So thank you again for being with us. I would suggest that we start just in a few sentences. You know, where have you? come from? What is your musical style? How did you fall into music and how did you fall into film scores? So we can go back to the beginning. You you started in a band, you played the bass guitar, and is this where you got your musical experience from? Uh, uh, well, actually I play a lot of instruments in a bad way. <laughs> that's that's a, a statement. Can you... Can you Hear me? J'ai pas de retour. Hello? J'ai pas de retour. Normal. And then I, anyway, I began playing in a band, like everybody, I think, that write music after that, or going on to play in the band, or whatever. And I begin with the commercials um, that give you something I can. Uh, can say it's a synthesis. You know, in 30 seconds, 45 seconds, in one minute, you have to write a, a little uh, soundtrack. So that's, I begin to, to, to fall in love with the images, the images. Uh, and so I, I, I tried to write music for, for, for the first film, was about 30 years ago. And uh, that, that's, what, you know, it's, it's very simple. And <laughs> Do, do, do you hear the translation? Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's very hard, yeah. So, that's, you know, can, can I start with uh, uh, talking about uh, the, the Grand Beauté, uh, the Great Beauty? Alors, c'est votre want. endroit. C'est votre endroit. Vous parlez absolument de ce que vous voulez. Et so moi, this is your place. You can talk what, about whatever you like. No, because this is a, a piece, a piece of music written for the great beauty, but it didn't find places in <laughs> the great beauty. So when Paolo Sorrentino, but but this is in, this is in the um, in, in the CD. So. He heard it and he said, why didn't you use that? And it, this is a question you ask to yourself, <laughs> not to me. And, uh, and this is uh, the scene, you, yeah. This is the, the word, the, the copy I used to work with. So, you know, you see the, the number of the scenes, the, the, the wrong name <laughs> of it, and uh, you know, the numbers of, of the, the time code and everything is just for work. No color correction, uh, you know. Let's try. How do you have a confidence? And this is was written for the great beauty. By giving in to the complex and unfathomable architecture that God has designed for us. Calma, Bernardo, calma.
yo camino aquí. seguiré protegiendo al niño This is just for, for thanks, for um, uh, two or three guitars, yes. and uh, a violin for the first theme, and then cello on the second uh, second theme. I remixed the, f uh, the, the track for the young Pope because you know the, the mix was wrong. Was right for the great beauty. D'accord, mais ça avait été composé avant pour la. Pour oh. C'est ça, ce oui, thème là oui, oui. avait été composé yes. pour la. Yes, so this la, was uh, written for the Grand Dabellets, yeah. right? Absolutely. Justement, parce que uh, vous, quelle a été la, la, la manière que vous avez eu d'aborder? What was uh, the way that you approached this? Uh, uh, you know, how did you uh, approach uh, film music and scenic music? Uh, of course, here you have ten hours of film footage and uh, of course uh, this is the music for the young pope it's like a 10 hour film so can you tell talk to it's, us about it's, that it's, it's a long film it's not 10 one hour film it's 10 hour one film movie and the approach is always the same for, to me because i i read i read the script that's for sure and I talk with the director before every, every, you know, before they shooting, and the most part, the most uh, pieces of music I read before. For the young pope, I, I, it's about eighty percent written before to see the movie, the the, the, the episodes anyway. Um, because when I, when you approach the, the first moment you approach a film, you have. Uh, it, 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 you know, the piece of uh, shit blank, you know, just white with, uh, you can do everything. You can go whatever you want, every direction should be, could be good. And then you... Liberté. You know, yeah, that's, that, that's the liberty. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Then you try to find a path, a target, so you slowly you get the direction and then you work with that direction speaking and talking with the director because he is the boss anyway mais l'aspect temps de, de prendre le temps but and so you need to take the time uh, almost to make an error and then uh, uh, you know fix it to get Right, so when you talk about the scene, uh, then then you can be more precise. And Let's say that what we have just seen now, mm -hmm. 
let's say this is good for that scene. Now I have the scene is uh, three minutes and a half, I don't know, whatever it is. Now, if the, if the track is good, I can use that one and adjust it, you know. It depends on the scene, on the, of the, uh, the cutting, you know, the edition and, and everything. But if it works, uh, uh, let me say with the, the, the atmosphere, uh, the, the, the visuals of the director, mm -hmm. because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, that, that's the point, what he has in his mind about the film, what he wants to say with the film. He worked for years with that, you know, with this, that scenes, with the, the idea. So that's why I have to follow his thoughts. <laughs> Votre relation, Votre relation avec Paolo Sorrentino, au niveau Your relationship with Paolo Sorrentino, so you start uh, working uh, right at the start of the, the uh, writing. So in your discussions with Paolo, can you talk to us about the relationship between uh, a screenwriter and a film director? Uh, what kind of a relationship is this and what rapport do you have with you? What do you talk about? Do you talk about families? What, what do you tell? to us about your relationship uh, yeah first of all we are close friends before we work together we are close friends so we have a dinner together we say bullshit <laughs> and everything and then he speaks not so much he speaks very very poorly <laughs> so you have to try to, you know, some, something like telepathy, you know, no, no one, you have to, to catch his thoughts in his mind in, and get inside his mind. That's very difficult, but it's a challenge that, 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 that they like. I like with every director, but especially with him, because he's so, he, he likes music. He listens to a lot of music, strange kind of music, music that and I just, Often I, I, I even know. <laughs> oui, c'est ça. Et, et, en effet, oui, cette, cette façon de cette façon de travailler. So uh, the way that you work uh, often, you know, the uh, writers and uh, directors. It's really rare that directors know exactly how to express themselves, and so you need this vision. You have to be imbued with all of this. Uh, so the whole relationship is based on that. Uh, that's it. <laughs> and so now I also wanted to talk about because you did inform me you told me yesterday that in the uh, screenplays they often there are uh, soundtracks that are marked into the scene already and so what did you do with those did you compose um, soundtracks that were already uh, defined uh, did you write on top of them or how did you manage to, uh, between the uh, bought music that was bought and the score itself <coughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so, so often uh, we are talking about f working with Paolo Sorrentino. He knows exactly what kind of music and where it goes just before. Because a, a lot of music, not the original music, I mean my music, the repertory music is written down on the script. That's uh, very strange because uh, anybody, do, I don't know, uh, no other people that do in this way. If you read the script, the screenplay, uh, you, you can read this music, the name, the artist, and where it goes. Because he sees the scene while he's writing down the, the, the screenplay. It's very strange. I don't, I don't even know anybody doing it that way. It's a really challenging, and uh, sometimes I, I write a lot of things. Now, now I, I begin to work with the, his next film that is begin in, in one month and a half, and I, I've written twenty pieces of music right now before they 
shoot the film. <laughs> that's the way, you know, the same, always the same way. I mean, I try to do this, this kind of writing with everybody. It's not just for with him, with everybody. I'd, I'd like to, you know, listen to the atmosphere. What, 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 what is this film? What, and the music should say something that's not on the screen. Because you have the actors, you have the photography, the costumes, the scenes, the director, the acting. So the troisième acteur. you have to, to, to say something that is not on the screen, if you can, if you know. Try, I try to, not often, you know. <laughs> Et, et suivant les films, vous orchestrez différemment la musique. Vous And so, uh, as per the film, depending on the film, you try to look for different colors, tones. The music of the film actually it can bring us into all genres of music. That's what you did with the Grande Bellezza. You did jazz. You did pop. You did classical. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to mix up. Uh, I try to write music for. Uh, real instruments and uh, electronics together. I don't know what kind of uh, this, uh, this is. This is just for orchestra. Can, can, you, can you listen to this one? See, si. this is just orchestra, no, no tricky stuff. <laughs> still alive. Your mother is still alive too. <laughs> And you'll find her. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alors, euh, une question comme ça, simplement pour rentrer un petit peu dans les aspects de production. Just to get into some production aspects very quickly, because artistically, of course, it's extremely interesting. But for production, you, you worked, how did you um, record some themes or did you do the, um, the models? Um, or did you record in Italy or... Yeah. The demos? Uh, yeah, norm normally I, I do demos in my studio with, uh, you know, with sample sounds, orchestras, you know, the, the kind of softwares. Now it's someone that's pretty good. You, I mean, you can hear the, you know, what it's like, what it should be. <laughs> And then if I, it depends. Uh, all the instruments that I play, so guitars, uh, keyboards, and uh, whatever kind of electronics, uh, I did it and do it in my studio. And then with Cubase software, I don't know if it's from someone, or it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, um, um, and then I bring the files 
in the studio, the big studio, the real studio. If I have to record some few real instruments, maybe a quartet of uh, ten instruments, something like this, uh, I do in the studio, the big studio in Rome. Otherwise, like that one we heard just before this one, um, I go to Praga with the Orchestra de la Philharmonic of uh, Praga because they are very good. They are always the same people playing together. So in if, maybe in four hours you can record about 20 minutes of music. So in one day, in two sessions, it should be almost 50 minutes of music. Cannot be said no. Because they are together. We have very good musicians in Italy, absolutely. No way. But they don't play together. You don't find, I mean, 70, 60, 50, 80 people that play together almost every day. So that's why the orchestra sounds very very good at the first take now you know you you do two takes just just in case yes sir but you know that's why i that's why we go there but not just me from the united states from england it depends on the budget you know but sometimes they go to praga also from alexander desplat I know him. He goes there. He va à Prague aussi. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, so he goes to Prague, does he? Yes, he goes everywhere, but he must go to Prague. Yes, I'm sure he does. Because he goes to all of the recording studios on the face of the earth. So, uh, yes. I, I told you it depends on the budget. You, you, you can record oui, it in, Lo, in Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, if the budget of the film, the music is uh, one million and a half. Doesn't matter. You can stay there. Ou avec le London. Oh, yeah. Or with the London, yes, yes, it's the same. The same. Il y a une chose qu'on n'a pas évoquée ensemble, c'est parce qu'on évite. So there's a something that we haven't talked about together. Yes. So we'll move ahead in a second. But when you you think of an Italian uh, composer, we think of uh, the the huge ones: Nino uh, uh, Rota, um, uh, Ennio Morricone, etc. These are the names that come uh, to mind. And so, uh, so has this influenced you? Is this um, does this come to um, help you in your work? Is it uh, nourishing? <laughs> Do you feed from it? And, uh, I mean, if I have to choose one of the two you named, I have to choose Nino Rota. Ou d'autres? Nino Rota. But anyway, not because Ennio Morricone is, you know, it's worse, <laughs> absolutely. But that's, I, I like that kind of, it, it's more, I think it's more contemporary, Nino Rota, because Nino Rota was a, a composer of music, music composer in a strictly way. Uh, Ennio Morricone is, uh, uh, he began with, with pop music, anyway, for an arranger, for a great, great pieces of um, pop music in the 60s. And then he began with uh, Sergio Leone, writing music for film soundtracks. And uh, the, 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 he, he thinks that he, he should be recognized for his contemporary composition instead of his work for films. You know what, you know what, what he means and what I mean? That's, you know, it's the one of the most important, one of, you know, five, ten in uh, decades of um, soundtrack composer. Uh, but, it, you yeah. know, mm. it doesn't like so much <laughs> to be recognized Six in that way. Yeah. Hmm? 
<rire> That's so strange. No one is happy with his work. <rire> oui, c'est très étonnant en effet. Et euh, là, nous avons des, des, des amis qui sont de l'Union. Yes, that's uh, surprising. Of course, here we have, you know, the um, Union of uh, Film uh, Score Composers. They are right here. Yes, and they have met with uh, Morricone. And so that's really um, uh, astonishing. It's really surprising. We won't talk about him for hours, but you know, it's the first frustration about uh, this, uh, uh, you know, his personal frustration because of uh, um, this uh, the film, being a film composer. This is one of the best in the world, you know, yes. and he, he is not happy about it. I mean, not completely happy, you know. You are not frustrated. He's frustrated, so you, I mean, you are not frustrated, no, are you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> No, no, that's music. I, I, I make music for, for films. I know. It's a service for the film. It's not music that you can go outside and listen to. What, what, what does it mean? That's business, you know. C'est une passion. Travailler à l'image. I mean, Morricone should, should be happy about it. It's amount of money, that's for sure. <laughs> and is, I think. <laughs> Now, like, can, can we... Listen to this. This one is uh, particularly moving to me because, uh, anyway, you see, you you will see the scene, and this is uh, completely improvised. Those are just guitars, a little bit of electronics, and uh, a faraway piano. Anyway, it, 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 I improvised this one. Mais vous l'avez fait à l'image, en improvisant. No, before. Before, okay. No, the, the, the same way I told you before. Okay, okay. No, <laughs> then, then I, then I, then I cut it to the scene that after it was written before. I. Yes, I do. I don't. Those who believe in God. I'm sorry. This fuck you. Yeah. Sorry about that. I. Yes, I do. I don't. Those who believe in God don't believe in anything. Tu l'avevi capito, eh, che mi ero innamorato di quella donna, vero? Certo che l'avevi capito. Io partì solo un libro aperto. Ed eccola qui. Ancora una volta la domanda di sempre. Ma chi l'ha detto che un uomo non può amare nello stesso momento Dio e anche una donna? Ma è una stronzata. <susurra> Una cosa non ho capito di te, se tu sei tifoso della Lazio come tuo padre o del Napoli come me. Sei ambiguo su questo punto. Come hai detto? Vuoi sapere che fine ha fatto Tonino Pettola? Guarda, insomma, Tonino Pettola è successo che... C'è su qualcosa scabrosa. Io non volevo, però il Papa... Insomma, Tonino Pettola... Eh, mio Dio, stavo per dirtelo. No, amico mio, mi devi scusare, ma io cosa è successo a Torino Petro non lo posso dire a nessuno. Perdonami, ma non lo posso dire nemmeno a te che sei il mio migliore amico. Ci sono certi segreti che è giusto che li sappia solo una persona. Non me ne volete, io ti voglio bene come al figlio che non ho mai avuto. Ma che fine ha fatto? Tonino Petto, da quello proprio non posso rivelartelo. Buon Natale, Girolamo. Thank you. Et alors, le, le mariage comme ça, durant toute la série de, de musique, euh, d'une écriture presque classique et des choses comme ça qui sont plus... Euh, euh, Est-ce que, est que la musique suit les personnages Est-ce que la musique... Ah, pardon. Est-ce que la musique, vous entendez I can't hear you. I mean, not you. Ah, vous m'entendez 
Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no? yes. It's good? It's, it's, I don't, wait, wait a minute, it's too much. Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Beautiful. That's okay. I just wanted to know, have you defined the themes uh, by the, the roles being played in the series? Is each role defined by a musical tone uh, and each character? Um, is there a precise architecture, musical architecture for the series? I don't know. <laughs> really, I, 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 it's, uh, that's the way we work with Paolo. I write down some music. It depends what kind of, you know, something classical, something with funny noises, something with piano, distant piano, and I don't know. And then it, you know, he knows, <laughs> not me. Oui. That's, uh, I, I understand it's strange kind of work in this. Ah, okay. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> but it's, that's the way we work. And then he should, oh, let's, let's try, they are, it, it beautiful, this, this beautiful. Let, let me try, I don't go in edit room uh, every day. Sometimes he calls me, hey, I, I tried this piece of music, it's beautiful. Now, can you cut it or expand it or whatever? Mm -hmm. That's the way. Oui, sont des éléments que vous lui apportez. Yes, so these are the elements that you bring to him, and then he can uh, use it. And so, of course, he's totally free to take this piece or this piece and do what he wants to it, depending on yeah. what he wants to apply yeah. it to. That's the way. That's the way we work. I mean, just with him. <laughs> this happens just with him. With other directors, directors, you know, it's, uh, that's, this is the scene. Uh, what, what do you think about? What do you want? I ask him what kind of, you know, and, 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 and the way who does that kind of work knows. Et vous allez réutiliser certainement des morceaux. And so you'll be using some pieces uh, over the second. Uh, uh, season, you know, you'll be doing new things, but will you be using some of the uh, music from the first season? Uh, how is that going to work? Uh, it's very, it's very far, but we work. We talk just a little bit with with Mr. Sorrentino, and uh, we thought that should be everything brand new, <laughs> nothing used in the, ah, on, okay. yeah. Oh, uh, because it's just another story uh, should be, uh, it's called the new pope. The new pope? Yeah. The, Sh the should new pope be, I don't know, okay. you know, it's, it's, oui. it's one here. Oui, c'est de repartir sur une autre narration. Yes, so that'll be a totally different uh, narration, it'll be narrated the, the, differently. The, the, the new pope, the mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is the, 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 cor the characters should be someone, should be the same, someone, someone new, I don't know, because uh, I stopped to read the, the screenplays of the episodes because I begin to, I began to work with, uh, for the new film. So the, the, the new Pope, they begin shooting in, uh, should be July next year. So we'll be on air. 2019 uh, should be on air. 2019. Uh, yeah. Uh, ten, ten epi episodes. No, eight. 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 No, no. Okay. The, 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 now our, the young pope was ten episodes. Well, they're supposed to be eight. Then he shoot it for twelve. We oui, parlez nous de And ça. And the HBO say, wait, hier. wait, take it easy, slow down. <laughs> Yes, you know, let's talk about that because that's really interesting. So that means uh, for, he went uh, for 12 episodes and then there was so much uh, a substance to work with. Uh, did you want to talk to us about that? Yes, there are a lot of scenes, a lot of material. You know, you should it, I don't know, really 
13 hours of good material. <laughs> then the, 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 the broadcaster said that it was, you know, it's just something about the, the commercials, uh, something that I really don't know why, but then now should be not more, at least 10 episodes. And was, you know, just two over. <laughs> Of, but then you have to, to stay in the 55, sometimes 57 minutes, no more, because the, the commercials and stuff that I really don't understand and I don't want to understand. Uh, so it was very difficult to, to mm. explain uh, that the story. But anyway, they saw it, they, they were happy. Oh, so they, yeah, they, they sold it in uh, 100 countries something like that, uh, also in uh, Mozambique. Uh, just one yeah. I remember. But. Yes, I would like to know uh, uh, what kind of um, a, a willful um, attitude did the producer have? Uh, was the producer involved in the musical choice, uh, in the editing? Uh, of course, uh, he's not the uh, broadcaster, so so what network was it for? Was it an Italian network? In the, that, this, this, in the young pope was uh, up to Paolo Sorrentino, everything. The cutting, the music choices, the producers, can say nothing, absolutely nothing, no. I mean, you know, yeah, I think that's why, but because if you want to make a film with him, you know, that, that that's the rule, the rules, he, you know, get it or leave it. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I've never heard anybody say nothing about why don't you move this one to there why don't you use this instead of absolutely it's, it's up to no, him it's up pas to him everything the edit the edit the music the actors the locations uh, and he, i mean he, he speaks with people that's for sure but the last word it's up to him. And here, uh, in, in the room, of course, we can continue in this way, but would you have any questions yet, by the way? Uh, yes, there are questions. Which simply questions. Voilà. Des questions simples. Alors, euh, les micros vont arriver, mais, mais ça va, tout va bien, parce que c'est vrai. Okay, que the, the mics will come, and, uh, but that's fine. Um, I've got some more questions, so... Oh, here, I think we have the mic. Thank you for your music, sir. And, um, you. and for about the young Pope... I saw it. I was wondering if you didn't have any temptation to do more classical in a way of more religious theme, especially, for example, when we saw the extract with the bishop who is talking with his son who is handicapped. <clears throat> I love the way of you treat the music. Uh, and I was the, the, thinking about... The improvised one, yeah, yeah. Because I'm a composer, what, what should I do if, if I had this theme to do? And it's a kind, it could be a kind of temptation to to do more like a religious thing or something like that. Didn't you think about that? Because I didn't hear really this kind of atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but um, you know, I, I did this place, this piece, piece of music, as I told it before, I don't know, six, eight months before, maybe more. And when, when he tried to put this music under the scene, I mean, I saw it, and I said, you're right. Mm. You know, I, I think, I mean, to me, it was right. Mm. Because there was no, you know, strings and everything. I, I'm trying to be counterintuitive. 
that 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 means um, in music, in film music, when you see a scene that calls, you know, strings. Okay, forget it. Let's give uh, a rock guitar. Do you remember the scene of um, uh, the Wolf of Wall Street by Scorsese? There is a scene in which the main character have an accident with the, the boat, mm -hmm. and then they have uh, saved by another boat, mm -hmm. and that they see inside with the, you know the blanket on, and so you know was was a kind of a scene dramatic. Mm -hmm. And do, do you remember what kind of music was in it? It's a piece of Italian music by, I don't remember the name, but anyway, it's a pop music at this, you know, it's called Ti Amo. Ti <laughs> Amo. <laughs> you know, if you think about a, a piece of music in that scene, this is the last piece of music you imagine, you can imagine to put it on. You know, that's, that's why, I'm talking about counterintuitive because also Paolo Sorrentino was. That, that's a beautiful. Yeah, yeah. This is something that we agree together with the same. You know. Ah, uh, you know. Sometimes you you see a scene. Okay, let's move, let's make, uh, you know a, a violin, something romantic because it's a romantic scene. No, <laughs> let's try it other things, let's try to, 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 to make it, you know, it's romantic, there, there are the actors over there, there are the, 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 something, they say something, they say something about the romantic, so why I have to be romantic <laughs> one more time? That, that's, you know, one of the reasons that we, we agree to, to put some music, uh, strange, should be, could be strange kind of music. Okay. Wanna listen to something else? So I will ask my question in French. Um, you you ex you explained that the um, film director indicated uh, where he wanted to synchronize the music that was pre-selected for the film. Was this done beforehand, uh, or were you completely? free to choose the music and the, the spots that you were uh, to have music behind them. W were you the one who uh, chose those spots to put the music or were all of those spots no, 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 pre-chosen no, no, no. already? I know what you mean, yeah, but uh, it's up to him. It sometimes, I mean always, as I as told before, the music is written down in the screenplay. I mean, the pop music or not my music. Sometimes he uh, say, a beautiful music should be here. That should, it means me, beautiful, you know. <laughs> wait, wait a moment. <laughs> that, no, 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 I, no, no, it's up to him. Almost the music, uh, the, 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 the spot, the cue are decided by him. In the, the length, you know, shorter or whatever. I, I, I try to adjust, you know, the, 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 my music, not the other one is the editor, assistant, or whatever. <laughs> okay, okay, can I? This this one is a piece of music that uh, records a lot of time in. Uh, in the all the ten episodes, about ten times I think, and it's called uh, "Fear of God," because if you have seen the, 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 the series, uh, the Pope is a strange kind of Pope, but he is um, Jude Law. Yeah, Jude Law. He has the fear of God, the fear of the faith, sometimes. So, the terror of the religion, 
Holy Father, Your Eminence. Yes, blessed Father. I was just kidding. That wasn't obvious. Hardly. So, as I was saying, our top priorities are one, the Radio Vatican signal needs boosting. It's unacceptable the reception is so poor. Two, the Pope wants to see all the gifts the Pope receives, have a storage facility fitted out for storing all the gifts I receive. Three, the Vatican must immediately buy back the papal tiara from the Basilica in Washington, D.C., which my predecessors, who favored sobriety over tradition, imprudently let go. And four, Sister Mary will also look after you. She will oversee all your activities and report directly back to me. She'll be your guardian angel. I am 60 years old, Holy Father. I don't need a guardian angel. Oh, we all need a guardian angel, Voyello. Especially unscrupulous, ambiguous men. Then, please, allow me to choose mine myself in another life. In this life, the Pope chooses your guardian angel for you. And he is the Pope. Did you call for me, Holy Father? Your Holiness, your sins. It's over. C'est Sister Marie, ça, c'est ça. C'était le thème de Sister Marie, c'est ça? No, it's this, Sister Mary. That's Sister Mary. That's a Sister is, Sister Mary's theme. No, this is. I, you know, I, I try to. Let me try and Sister Mary theme. That's it. Something's changed. You were just a jerk, and now you've become the Pope. <laughs> Thank you. So this was recorded yeah. in Prague. Le piano, vous l'aviez enregistré à Prague aussi, ou vous aviez fait? No, actually, I recorded the piano in Rome. 
and then the orchestra played on the piano. Mais on entend bien le piano oh, romain. With a click, you know. Oui. C'est un piano romain. The, the piano in Rome, yeah. <laughs> you can recognize this voice. Je voulais parler de ça parce que il se trouve que moi j'ai le plaisir d'avoir eu un cadeau. Yes, so uh, I um, uh, was so pleased to have this uh, gift, but how has this come out in... Uh, it's been sold uh, on the market? It should be. I mean, they, they gave me, I hope so. Je voudrais, je voudrais, je voudrais savoir simplement comment se passe... They made the DLP. Les rapports, les, les rapports avec la production, comment votre musique est... The uh, relationship, uh, you know, the uh, production rapport, for example, uh, the series has become totally international. Does the series follow the success of the series, you know, in um, places that it's been sold? Do you, do you know if the if the CD uh, is sold where the series is sold? I don't know. Just let me tell you one thing. Talking about the CD, they didn't tell me what kind of my music they used to put on the CDs. <laughs> you know, I have to tell it. You know, bon, they are bastards. Ce sont vos musiques, on est bien d'accord. <laughs> you know. On, va, on vient bientôt terminer cette masterclass. Est-ce que quelqu'un a des questions encore à poser Nous allons terminer maintenant cette masterclass. Est-ce que quelqu'un d'autre a des questions Ah, bonjour. Je peux poser une question Merci beaucoup pour ce panel. C'est très bon. Et je voudrais demander. Merci. Merci. C'est un grand travail. Et vous êtes un idole pour nous. Et je veux juste demander quelque chose sur le côté business de la composition pour les films et les drama. Dans quelle façon Dans cette façon. Like, après ce this, uh, this jeune pop, uh, like, do you get calls from producers uh, that you haven't met before uh, or is it always usually the producers that you know personally uh, that offer you new projects how, uh, how it is actually how it is? I had some calls from uh, United States but now we have nothing so <laughs> yeah I have two or three you know just pour parler <laughs> but that's all I didn't see anything written down. That, that uh, I answered your question. Yes, perfectly. <laughs> and, and also one one little question. Uh, you said all these themes, this music, you composed beforehand when you yeah, read the script. Th that's why yeah, you, I like to work. You know, sometimes work, sometimes not. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask you. Uh, sometimes, do you like also? Do you prefer uh, composing to the scene? to the screen once you have the visuals, the video, I mean, uh, maybe some specific scenes. Well, um, I like to write before because I'm, you know, I'm free. Sometimes I get wrong, you know, I, let's say I, I write, uh, wrote for the young Pope, maybe uh, about 50 pieces of music. And we use it. Uh, we used about 25, but the other 25 <laughs> were just good for me. Maybe 10 was forget it, you know, just bullshit, garbage. But you know, 15 are still are still good pieces of music that maybe we can use it uh, on, on the next season. Maybe for the old pop, you can use it if there is an maybe old pop. The, the, me, the old me. No, no, you're <laughs> okay. <old> pop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Écoutez, Lélé, on arrive malheureusement au terme de cette masterclass. Oh, okay, now, Lélé, we are coming to the end of this masterclass. Uh, so thank you so much for your kindness and your availability. Um, It was a pleasure. Aussi bien ce soir. You're very kind. Thank you, Nicolas. Et, et merci aux, aux deux traductrices. Merci infiniment. Thank you to the, the marvelous merci ladies over there. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you.